the worst thing happens during the last century is extinction of species during the last century we gave the highest pace for our developmental activities we are responsible for the destruction of genetic and species diversity which took several millions of years to grow that's why today we are facing several problems several species are extinct and several are very near to extinct extinction of species hello everybody i heartily welcome all of you to join today's lesson today we are going to discuss about the extinction of species a species becomes extinct when its last representative dies this has happened quite a lot of times on earth but in recent days it is due to hyper industrialization urbanization and hunting by humans many humans feel that extinction is very sinful event world conservation union ne ek red list banayi hai is with such so 84 animals ate plant species record kitiya gaya han jehdiya pichle 500 saala vich khatm ho gaya han is to pata lagda hai ki pichli sadi vich स्पीशीज के लुप्त होने की दर ज्यादा सी सिर्फ भारत में ही चार सौ उनाहठ जातिया अजिया हैं जिन्हों की एगजिस्टेंस खत्म है हंटिंग वाइल्ड एनिमल्स की ट्रेडिंग के कारण जानवर पौधिया दिया जातिया लुप्त हो रही हैं इसलिए हूँ इन जातिया बचा का यत्न किया जा रहा है इन की ट्रेडिंग हंटिंग से पाबंदी लगा के इन्हों बचाया जा सकता है अगे वन तो पहला आओ लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव से एक नजर पा लीए ऑन कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस टॉपिक लर्नर्स विल बी एबल टू डिफाइन एक्सटिंक्शन डिस्कस द कॉजिज ऑफ एक्सटिंक्शन डिस्क्राइब पैरामीटर्स ऑफ रेड डेटा बुक डिस्क्राइब कैटेगरीज ऑफ थ्रेटेंड स्पीशीज आइडेंटिफाई थ्रेटेंड स्पीशीज जातिया का लुप्त ज एक्सटिंक्ट होना विग्ञानियों चिंता का विषय है कई ऑर्गनाइजेशन इन जातिया लुप्त होने तो बचा लम कर रही हैं जिमें वर्ल्ड वाइड फंड फॉर नेचर सरकार ने कानून बना के इन स्पीशीज के शिकार व्यापार से पाबंदी लगा दी है उलंघना करने वाले सजा देने की व्यवस्था भी की है इस तरह सरकार स्पीशीज नु खत्म होने तो बचा यत्नशील है पीपल हु लिव क्लोज टू नेचर आर मोस्टली डिपेंडेंट ऑन सराउंडिंग स्पीशीज इन देयर एनवायरनमेंट सो पीपल आर पोजिंग थ्रेट टू स्पीशीज हाउ एवर ओवर पॉपुलेशन क्रिएट्स द इनॉर्मस प्रेशर ऑन फॉरेस्ट इट इज मेनली ड्यू टू सबसिस्टेंस एग्रीकल्चर इंक्लूडिंग स्लैश एंड बर्न एग्रीकल्चरल टेक्निक्स that can reduce endangered species habitats do you know india alone has a total of 459 threatened species of which includes 86 mammals 70 birds 25 reptiles 3 amphibians 8 fishes 23 invertebrates and 244 plants due to continued hunting and trade of wild animals and commercially valuable plants thousands of plants and animal species are heading towards extinction hey you must be aware about the concept of extinction let's define the term extinction extinction is basically a complete elimination of a population or species koi species khatam kiwe ho jandi hai jo do species da अखीला प्राणी भी मर जाता है जहाँ के अखीले प्राणियों भी अगो संतान उत्पत्ति नहीं होंगी नवी पीढ़ी पैदा नहीं होंगी ए स्पीशीज के अखीले प्राणियों की उम्र खराब सेहत करके जपीशीज के दोवा लिंगा के प्राणियों की अनहोंद भाव एक ही प्राणी बचा है मेल या फीमेल जिहे कारण करके है इन द सिंपल वर्ड्स we can say when particular species is wiped out by any cause it is known as extinction of species 
humans are mainly responsible for the worst spate of extinctions. We are currently responsible for the sixth major extinction event in the history of earth. It is now the greatest extinction of species after the age of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were disappeared 65 million years ago. Apart from the disappearance of the dinosaurs, the other big five extinctions were about 205, 250, 375 and 440 million years ago. Scientists suspect that asteroid strikes, volcanic eruptions or sudden climate shifts may be responsible for that extinction. But for the recent extinction, mainly human beings and its allied developmental activities are responsible. Human beings are responsible for environmental pollution, hyperurbanization, deforestation, introduction of alien species and global warming etc. Hyperdevelopmental activities are mainly responsible for posing threat to biodiversity because most of the development works like dams, reservoirs, roads, railway lines, construction mines etc. are posing threat to biodiversity. There are several other factors also threatening our biodiversity, causes of extinction. Destruction of natural habitats of wild species, decrease of wetlands, unplanned and unsystematic overgrazing, indiscriminate hunting, exotic species and the trend of monoculture, rapid urbanization and speedy transport. Lack of awareness in the community, environmental pollution, global warming and climate change, disturbance in migratory routes through human interference, overexploitation of natural resources, international trade and official laxity. And many more causes are posing threat to the biodiversity. It is estimated the current pace of extinction is thousand times faster than historical rates. This extinction became faster due to the destruction of the natural habitats. Destruction of natural habitats. Sarya species de survival lay habitat chaida hunda hai. Je anukul habitat na mile, ta species zyada samay tak zinda nahi reh sakdiya. Jangla di katai karanal ate water resources de pollution naal Wild animals be kar ho jande han, ate vinash de kagar te pahon jande han. Habitat degradation can also take the form of a physical destruction of natural habitats. You might have heard or seen that most of the tropical rain forests are now replaced with open pasture land, mainly in developing areas. The elimination of the dense forest eliminated the infrastructure needed by many species to survive. For example, a fern that depends on dense shade for protection from direct sunlight can no longer survive without forest to shelter it. Another example is the destruction of ocean floor by bottom trawling. By the help of trawler, most of the bottom species are poached by the fishermen. Introduction of new competitor species also affects the adaptability of species. Let's know how it can be possible. Humans have been transporting animals and plants from one part of the world to another. Sometimes livestock released by sailors onto islands as a source of food and sometimes accidentally few rats escape from boats. In most cases, such introductions are unsuccessful, but when they become established as an exotic alien species, the consequences can be catastrophic. Exotic alien species can affect native species directly by eating them. Sometimes the native species are unable to compete with alien species. It introduces pathogens or parasites that kill them directly or indirectly by destroying or degrading their habitat. Do you know, 
Sometimes this extinction is compulsory, such as for eradication of diseases, many species of viruses and bacteria are wiped out. For example, the smallpox and polio virus is now wiped out, although few samples are retained in laboratory. Therefore, we can say for the eradication of diseases, it is essential to wipe out the species. Anopheles mosquitoes which spread malaria and Aedes mosquitoes which spread dengue fever, yellow fever, elephantiasis and other diseases represent only 30 species. If we eradicate these species, then we can save at least 1 million human lives per annum. But at the same time, it will reduce 1% genetic diversity of the Culicidae family. But we should not forget that if there is a continuous mass extinction of the species, it may disturb or destroy the entire ecosystem. Removing one species sometimes causes shifts in the populations of other species. Sometimes these species may be used for anti-malarial and mosquito control programs. We all are familiar about the snake. Everybody knows that snake is very poisonous. If we wipe out all snake species, then it may be disastrous event for us. Do you know why? If all snakes die, then the population of rats will increase and these rats spread the plague and also destroy our grains and crops. It is not enough. If all the snakes die, then it is obvious that it will disturb the food chain as well as food web. We will be unable to get cancer curable medicines which are now extracted from the poison of black python snake. Do you know the black python snake poison is used in chemotherapy? The chemotherapy is used to destroy the cancer tissues in human body. So we see that this snake is very useful, then how can we think about the complete elimination of a particular species? Every species has its own importance. Every species which seems to be useless and harmful may be a potential resource for future. So now we are clear about the importance of species. But as we learned so far, that it is an era of sixth mass extinction of species. There are three ways of extinction. First is natural extinction. Second one is mass extinction. And the last one is anthropogenic extinction. So let's discuss one by one. First we will discuss about the natural extinction. Natural extinction is also known as background extinction. This type of extinction is not easily detectable. Sometimes extinction process is very slow due to failure of reproduction or genetic changes. But sometimes it may be rapid due to disaster such as flood, volcanic eruption and forest fire etc. In this type of extinction, some species disappear due to change in environment and still others appear which are adapted to changed environment. This is called natural extinction. It is a gradual continuous process and has occurred in geological past. It cannot be stopped by human being. There is no control over this type of extinction. The second type of extinction is mass extinction. Let's explore about it. Many times several species disappeared due to catastrophes. This has occurred several times in geological history. The most exciting example of mass extinction could be the disappearance of dinosaurs coupled with loss of more than 50% of the existing species at the end of Cretaceous period. The waiting global warming may cause mass extinction in future. It is a matter of constant concern. Do you know why the global warming is responsible for mass extinction? Anyway, let's explore the video. Global warming Basically, global warming may be a threat to biodiversity in coming future. Global warming will increase the global temperature and the increased temperature directly affects the glaciers. Once the glaciers will melt, 
then it will increase the water quantity in the river. Thus, water flows in the speedy manner. Once the water flows in speedy manner, then it will affect the river ecology. If the glaciers are wiped up rapidly, then it may be disastrous to us in terms of flood. And on the upper highlands or upper areas of mountains, there will be no water. As we know, without water, no species can survive. Therefore, we can say if the water availability is surplus, then it may create flood type situation. And if there is a scarcity of water, then it may generate the famine type situation. Overall, in both conditions, it affects the biodiversity. It mainly poses threat for the highlands of the mountainous regions. Global warming ne species which reproduction de pattern ate season which badlav kar deta hai. Je mausam which halchal hai, taapman 40 degree Celsius to zada hai, ta kai species khatm ho jaan gya. Hydrophytes cut barsat which zinda nahi reh sakde. Kai wari kai species climate which aon wale change nu seh nahi sakdiya. O apne aap nu environment de anukul nahi taal sakdiya. अते ओ माइग्रेट भी नहीं कर पाउंडिया। इस तरह ओ छेती मर जान्दे हन अते लुप्त हो जान्दे हन। Another major cause of the extinction is anthropogenic extinction. Let's explore about it. शहरी करन, उद्योगी करन, विकास दिया गतिविधियाँ करके इंसान बायोडाइवर्सिटी ले खतरा पैदा कर रहा है। थोड़े समय विच कई जातियाँ खत्म हो गई हन। World Conservation Monitoring Center ने 384 पौधिया तो ज्यादा अते 533 जानवरा दिया स्पीशीज दे लुप्त होन दे संकेत दिते हन। जे ए इसी तरह चलदा रहा ता 21 सदी दे अध तक कुल स्पीशीज दा एक बहुत वड़ा हिस्सा लुप्त हो जावेगा। Overall we can say our biodiversity is under great pressure for the conservation of the biodiversity an international union for conservation of nature and natural resources prepared the list of threatened or endangered species. This list is published as the red list of IUCN. As we learned that the red list is prepared by the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources or IUCN for the threatened species. Do you know where is headquarter of IUCN? Anyway, I will tell you. Actually, the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources is controlled through Morges in Switzerland. It is an institution which maintains the international list of species. The list is published in the Red Data Book. Red Data Book on Indian Plants was published by the Botanical Survey of India in the years 1987 and 1988. It contains a record of plants which are known to be in danger or threatened. Let's know more about Red Data Book. This book contains thousands of taxa of animals, plants and fungi. It basically categorizes the threat categories which are widely applicable on the species. Note that these categories refer to the conservation status of an organism in the wild, not to its presence in cultivation or captivity. In 1994, IUCN adopted a revised set of red list categories prepared by the IUCN Species Survival Commission. There are eight categories and three subcategories. Unlike the original IUCN threat categories, these also include a series of criteria such as population reduction, extent of occurrence, population size mature individuals, probability of extinction, etc. It is used to make the conservation assessment. I hope now you are clear about the red data book. So let's know what categories are mentioned in this book. On the basis of degree of threat, Eight red list categories have been identified. IUCN red list categories on the basis of threat are as following. 
extinct, extinct in the wild, critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, lower risk but rare species, data deficient, not evaluated. Let us discuss one by one. First we will discuss about extinct species. Let us explore the video of extinct species. Extinct. When there is no reasonable doubt then the last individual has died. In the simple words we can say the species which is known to us only in the history or in the Vedas such as dinosaurs but now they are not found anywhere on the planet. These kinds of species are known as extinct species. Overall we can say that the extinct species are not present on this planet but there are certain evidences in the form of fossils. On the behalf of fossils we can say that they were present on this planet. But due to certain climatic or natural disasters they are completely vanished from this planet. Now move to another category that is extinct in the wild. When extensive surveys are done, the species found negligible even in their own habitat is known as extinct in the wild. It is expected that these kinds of species may be present and expected in their habitats. But it is the rarest species which is found only up to limited areas. It is believed that these kinds of species are rarest from the rare. For example, white elephant of Thailand. After the extinct in the wild, now let us discuss about the critically endangered species. Let's see the visuals. Critically endangered. Sometimes in the survey we find that few species are heading towards the extinction such as a plant Berberis nilgiriensis, while Sus sylvaninus or pygmy hog is an animal which is quoted under critically endangered species. Now come to another category that is known as endangered species. Let us explore more about it. When it is not critically endangered, however, is facing a very high risk of disappearance in the wild in the immediate future or in simple words it is also known as endangered or E species. These are those species or taxa whose number have been reduced to a critical level or whose natural habitats have been adversely affected. So these are near extinction and may become extinct if these casual factors continue operating. Endangered Some examples of endangered species in India is Bentinkia nicoberica, a type of plant while Elurus fulgens or red panda is a type of animal which is quoted as endangered species. After the endangered species, there is a turn of vulnerable species. So let's discuss about it. When the species is not critically endangered or endangered but is facing a high risk of disappearance in the wild in the medium term future, the vulnerable species are also denoted as V species. These are those species or taxa whose populations are still abundant but their home range has been adversely affected. So these may become endangered if these factors continued. Some of the common vulnerable animal species of India are Presbytis giri, it is also known as golden langur, while Felis bengalensis is a leopard cat, black buck or antelope cervicapra are quoted under the vulnerable species. Cupressus cashmeriana is a plant which is quoted under the vulnerable species. Now let's move to the other lower risk category. Here lower risk doesn't mean low risk because they are still rare species. So let's explore more about it. 
when it has been evaluated and does not satisfy the criteria for critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable. These are also known as rare species and denoted as R category. These are those threatened species which are very less in number and are usually confined in a specific area or very thinly distributed over wide geographical area. Though these are not endangered presently but may become endangered due to their less number. Rare species Some rare Indian animal species are snow loris which is also known as Nectisibus kokang. There is another rare species Indian desert cat. It is also known as Felis sylvestris. Wild yak or Bos mutus. Malkhor or Capra falconeri. Gadial or alligator are also quoted under the rare species. The seventh category is mentioned as the data deficient. Sometimes exact information or the data is not available for the species. So it is classified under the data deficient category. In this category, only those species are included which do not have any risk of extinction. That's why data is not collected intensively to make a direct or indirect assessment for any purpose but still they are enrolled in the red data book. The next category is of not evaluated. These species are just for entitlement that they are present in enough numbers. There is no need to count. These are counted as the livestock population. These species are widely used and consumed for several purposes. Overall, after the wide discussion of the categories, we can categorize mainly into three main categories. These three categories are defined here for the purposes of conservation. These are endangered, vulnerable and rare species. I think there is no need to discuss more about the categories. So let's move towards the major uses of red list. The major uses to maintain the lists are to bring awareness about the significance of threatened species. Identification and documentation of endangered species. To bring out conservation priority at local level and directing conservation action. To provide a global index of decline in biodiversity. In India, the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 is enforced for the conservation of fauna and flora. About 81 species of mammals, 38 species of birds and 18 species of amphibians and reptiles are endangered in India. So it indicates that we are also heading towards the extinction. As we know, everybody is integrated with the ecosystem. Every plant, animal, reptile, bird, fungus, humans are the part of ecosystem. If we wipe out any species, then we should be ready to face the mass extinction from this planet. I hope all are well familiar about each and every aspect regarding the causes of extinction of biodiversity. Let us recapitulate what we have learned so far. Extinction is basically a complete elimination of a population or species for which humans are mainly responsible for the worst spate of extinctions. Most of the development works like dams, reservoirs, roads, railway lines, construction mines, etc. are posing extra threat to biodiversity. While the predation, competition and disease among the species pushing the most of the species towards extinction. Overall, we can say our biodiversity is under great pressure. For the conservation of biodiversity, an international union for conservation of nature and natural resources prepared the list of threatened or endangered species on the basis of threat. As we know, biodiversity is important to us in several manners. 
are most of the requirements are fulfilled by the forest and its allied products means biodiversity. It not only provides the foodstuffs, industrial stuff, medicines, but it also helps to generate the economy. So biodiversity is a boost to development. That's why we have to conserve our biodiversity. Now we reach to our destination means end of today's topic. Here's a quick test for you to find out how much you have actually absorbed. Question 1. What is the term coined for complete elimination of a population or species? Answer. It is known as extinction of species. Question. Which book contains thousands of taxa of animals, plants and fungi? Answer is Red Data Book. Question. Which organization is engaged in the preparing of the Red List on the basis of threat? Answer. It is IUCN. Next question. Which three categories are mentioned by IUCN on the basis of conservation? Answer is endangered, vulnerable and rare species. Question. Which mosquito is responsible for malaria? Answer. It is Anopheles mosquito. It helps to spread malaria. Question. Which species of mosquito is responsible for dengue fever, yellow fever and elephantiasis? Answer, it is Aedes mosquito. Next question. Red panda is quoted under which category of threatened species? Answer, it is categorized under endangered species. Question. Indian desert cat is quoted under which category of threatened species? Answer, it is categorized as rare species. Next question, black buck is quoted under which category of threatened species? Answer, it is categorized into vulnerable species. I am confident that you have all scored well. I hope you enjoyed the lesson as much as I did and are looking forward to the next class. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.